Tom, thanks for joining us. Great you, to be with you, Kelly. You have served uh, the Democrat Party in America for many years in public service. Uh, former chair of the DNC, former labor secretary. What is the essence of tonight's speech from uh, Vice President Kamala Harris? Well, this is a chance for the vice president to reintroduce herself to the nation, to articulate her vision of inclusion and opportunity for everyone. It's going to be a speech about the future. It's going to be a speech about how everybody gets a fair shake. And I think the American people are going to be really excited. I, I have not seen momentum like I've seen, Kelly, in the last 30 days. Um, I, I, you know, 2008 comes to mind. Yeah. But uh, the, the, the momentum is palpable. And, and she will be speaking not simply to Democrats. She's speaking to everyone. Uh, you've seen the convention, you know, Democrats, Republicans, independents. She wants to move away from this us versus them. I only succeed if you fail. That's not who we are. Her vision is for all of America, making sure that everybody has access to quality, affordable health care, making sure that everyone has access to affordable prescription drugs, making sure women have the freedom to make decisions about their own bodies. These are not issues that are only limited to certain subsets. And that's why I think there's such excitement, because it's an inclusive vision and, frankly, a joyful vision. Tom, you know, you worked at labor, and um, there's a lot of people in America who would like to have more labor, to put more money into their pocketbooks. Talking about kitchen table issues, there are people on the south side of Chicago who are right here in Chicago, close to the convention, yet they don't feel the euphoria and momentum that people feel here because they're still finding it hard to get money to buy food and to pay rent. How does the Democratic Party reach out to them on a ground game mm. to say, we've got your back, as Oprah Winfrey said that Kamala Harris would do? Well, she outlined, uh, I believe it was last week, a very forward-leaning set of proposals about reducing costs. I'll give you one example. Um, you know, going after what she calls greedflation. You know, you look at grocery prices and you know they shot up in the pandemic. They came down uh, to a, a fair degree, but not nearly enough. And the reason they didn't come down enough was the, the large grocery chains were reaping record profits. Why did they do that? Because they could. And, you know, I, I was reading um, some polling the other day about people who feel like we're on the wrong track. And, and, and they were asked, why do you think we're on the wrong track? And, and the number one answer was greed. And you know what? They're right. And so she outlined that. We also need to make housing more affordable. And she had a very uh, granular and forward-leaning plan on how to make sure that people can afford the rent and that you know, if you're ready to buy a house but you just don't have that down payment, she has a proposal to provide that down payment assistance so you can get into that um, American dream. You know, the, one of the top ways we accumulate wealth in this country is through home ownership. We've got to make it more uh, accessible. And these are examples of things that she's doing that are focused on these pocketbook issues, continuing the work that the Biden administration and, frankly, President Obama did to lower the costs of prescription drugs. We finally beat Big Pharma, and she was part of it, uh, casting the deciding vote in that critical bill. And we're going to continue to make sure that insulin's affordable and that a host of other prescription drugs are affordable.